right. My name is Jaron Price. I serve as Deputy Director for Youth Workforce Development at the D.C. Department of Employment Services. Thank you. And I am excited to be here um, on behalf of Director Deborah Carroll, who could not be here today because she has a family commitment, but she's certainly with us in spirit. Um, but we are super excited um, to have everybody here in the building today um, as we look to celebrate uh, SYEP and as we really look at a historical day in the program as we're expanding to serve youth ages 22 to 24. Now, I would be remiss not to acknowledge some of the distinguished guests who we have in the building with us today. Uh, first and foremost, I want to first just say thank you to our mayor, Muriel Bowser. We have two of our deputy mayors in the building, Deputy Mayor Courtney Snowden, who's Deputy Mayor for Greater Economic Opportunity, and our Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, Mr. Brian Kenner. We have several council members who are here with us as well. Um, I want to thank um, our committee chairman, com uh, chairman of the Business, Consumer, and Regulatory Affairs Committee, uh, Chairman Vincent Orange. <laughs> Ward 7 Council Member Yvette Alexander. <laughs> Ward 4 Council Member Brandon Todd. And Ward 8, the land that we are in right now, give it up for Council Member LaRuby May. Now, there's a number of other folks who I'd like to just give some recognition to. Um, there are many of you who are in the room right now who I am so excited to see as I look around the room. A lot of familiar faces um, who over the years have worked diligently to help make sure that the SYEP can happen. Uh, we always often say that without the support of our employer network here in the city, it would not be possible to have a summer youth employment program. Um, so if you could, all of our employers who are in the room, if you could stand so that we could just recognize and acknowledge you for being here today. Anyone who is an SYEP employer partner. We appreciate you for all that you do. You all make a world of difference. Um, we often say that one of the most important pieces and elements of the Summer Youth Employment Program is that our young people have access to caring uh, adults who want to help to inspire them, um, to challenge them, and to help them to expand their boundaries. And you all make that happen every summer. And we want to thank you for what you've done in the past, and especially thank you for what you're going to do this summer and in future summers. So thank you all uh, for being here this morning. Um, secondly, I would like to make sure, um, before we leave here today, I have some amazing staff members who are here from the Department of Employment Services, Office of Youth Programs. OIP staff, if you could stand up, please. This is a team that makes SYEP happen. They work extremely hard throughout the year, uh, evenings, weekends. Folks know that they put in a lot of hours, and we appreciate you all for what you do. Um, last but not least, I want to acknowledge um, to me, the most important guests who are in the room right now, um, anyone in this room who is an SYEP participant, either current, uh, past, or future, if you could please stand, and we want to give these young people a round of applause. The young people who are in here, you are the ones who make it happen. So we're so happy that you're here with us this morning um, and very happy to be able to work with you this summer and every summer uh, to make sure that you have opportunities really to connect to meaningful work experience that you can translate um, into future opportunities. Um, one of the most important things about why we are here today, um, when you think about just the crisis of uh, youth unemployment throughout the country, um, right now the unemployment rate actually stands at 19.2%. I mean, that number is exponentially higher when you look at some of our um, urban cores and you look at areas that are hardest hit by poverty. Um, so youth employment is an extremely important issue. Um, and when, the, when President Obama signed the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act uh, that goes into effect on July 1, one of the key changes in that act and key things that people around the country are really looking at um, is that population between the ages of 22 to 24, that young adult group 
um, that oftentimes is disconnected from school, um, that has not been connected to a government service in quite some time, um, and who in many times are unemployed and looking for work. And so I think one of the things that's really important about this initiative is that it really puts D.C. at the forefront of what a lot of folks are doing nationwide to make sure that we wrap our arms and hands and everything else around that population and make sure that they are connected to great opportunities. Um, what this summer program will do is offer youth ages 22 to 24 with paid, highlight paid, work experiences during the summer um, that will also transition into great opportunities for them throughout the year. Now, what I'd like to do, that deserves a round of applause. Now, before we get to the, to the signing of the legislation, um, which we're here to do today, um, and before we hear from our, uh, from our mayor and some of our featured guests, um, we have a very important speaker who I want to give an introduction to right now. Um, I mentioned that one of the key goals that we have is that young people who enter the SYEP benefit from it and are able to translate that into a full-time opportunity. Well, I have someone here who did just that last summer. Uh, Mr. Lamont Burton is an individual who is 22 years old, um, currently resides in Ward 7, and previously was a Ward 8 resident. Um, and he's somebody who really just epitomizes the fact that your past does not define your present, and it does not limit your future. Um, he is somebody who I think is just an inspiration to many young people, um, and is somebody who I think has some great words that he would like to share about his experience. So please give a warm welcome to Mr. Lamont Burton. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I would like to give thanks to the mayor of Washington, D.C., and the Summer Youth Employment Program. By creating a Summer Youth Pro Employment Program, it, has given, it had given us the opportunity to find ourselves as young men and women. I think the Summer Youth Employment Program is a good opportunity for the youth because it helps the youth by earning money, developing skills, keeping a positive attitude, and staying out from the streets because that's where our youth is at right now. I've been working with Deanwood Cafe for a year now. I started through the Summer Youth Employment Program, and now I'm a full-time employee. I'm glad that the Summer Youth Employment Program is trying to help the youth because they don't want to see the youth fall, but they want to see the youth accomplish their goals and to increase their skills. That is the most important thing the Summer Youth Employment Program helps with. As the youth, we would like to give thanks to our former mayor, Marion Barry, whom also is the finder of the Summer Youth Employment Program, <laughs> and Mayor Mario Browser for continuing the Summer Youth Employment Program for our young adults and future upcoming youth. We appreciate you, and we appreciate your hard work. Thank you. And I just want to say that Lamont is such a great employee at the Dean Wood Cafe, and anybody who wants to stop by, he is somebody who's always friendly, always welcoming, um, exhibits excellent customer service, and is just an all-around standout young man. So thank you, Lamont. Let's give him one more round of applause. Now, I mentioned that our SYEP employer partners are the folks who really make this program happen every year. Um, and we have one individual who has been serving as a host employer in the program, I believe, for the last eight years. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and this is a gentleman who is passionate about making sure that young people are connected to opportunities. Um, please give it up for our executive director of 8th Street Main Street, Anwar Saleem. Thank you, John. Thank you for your staff um, and what you guys have done in the past and um, in the direction you guys go in the future. Also, I would like to say thank you to Mayor Bowser for taking this program in a higher direction. Sometimes we, in, uh, we acquire things and we keep it as it is and we don't grow. We don't grow the programs. She is taking this program another step further where we are taking it to uh, age 21 to 24. That's very, very important because that's, that's a time when many of our kids have graduated from college on one end and they're in between jobs trying to find their way. At the same time, it's another time where you have many kids who come out of high school or probably didn't make it to high school, but yet they want to get out the streets. They want to find another way, another opportunity. And with that opportunity between the age of 24, 21 and 24, that'll give them a chance to come to places like 8th Street and many of your jobs and many of your, your businesses to uh, get that experience. Exposure is very, very important. 
And what we fail to do with our kids most of the time, not only here but around the country, we fail to provide our kids with abundance of exposure. Most kids grow up in D.C. and they stay in D.C. They grow up in D.C., they go to jail in D.C., they have the successes in D.C., and they don't get out of D.C. So we have to find a way to get our kids more exposure so they can have more opportunities to really meet the American dream, the American dream of taking care of their family, the American dream of having a house, the American dream of really being successful and probably opening their own businesses. We have to give them that type of inspiration in order for them to grow, and this program would do just that. I remember when I was a little kid that John F. Kennedy had made a statement during his inauguration. He said, ask not what, what um, our country can do for you, but what you can do for the country. What can you do for our country? And that stuck with me many years. Uh, for uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, he had a dream. He had a dream of people coming together. He had a dream of economic prosperity, of, 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 of people coming together and have an equal chance to really aspire and do well in this country. And I think that although he didn't see that dream fulfilled, that we are ascendants of that dream and that we have to work. He dreamed we have to work, and we have to work very hard in order to meet those goals. So those goals are not over. Those goals are just the beginning, the beginning of many other dreams. And again, I would like to thank you, um, Madam Mayor, for taking this dream, taking it to another step. Also, I um, would like to um, invite, invite others, invite other businesses um, to have the same experience that we had. Um, I want to give you a few experiences that we had on H Street with some of youth. Uh, we have we worked with many of the developers along the H Street corridor, uh, with Clock Development, uh, Guy Stewart, 360. And these guys actually give the kids more exposure. They actually show them what they're doing in their development. They actually mentor the kids. We have businesses that um, where kids work in businesses, and they um, decided that they wanted to go to school later on. We have one young man who um, is very special to me. Um, he came up and testified at the city council hearing last year. Um, it was very surprising to me. He's, he was now a, then a student at Howard University. And um, what, he, what he did in between that time he actually, he actually created a business for his father. His father is a street vendor. And he created a business for his father where his father now have a paint store. He had a paint truck. If you see that truck around the street, peppermint painting, this summer youth created that peppermint truck. And now his father have a job where he paint uh, throughout the year. And he have a vending business and he have a paint business. This is something this summer youth did. And now he has a degree in, um, in social work. And so he, he is going to work with us again this summer to take what we're doing on H Street to another level and hopefully that he'll get some placement somewhere in D.C. government in social work. That's one of his dreams. Um, we have another young lady who wanted to be a model. She worked in, in retail, and we had her work in one of the retail stores, and um, she wanted to be a fashion model. We hooked her up with uh, Barbizon. She, she worked with Barbizon. They took her on for no cost at all. She eventually went to Icon. We got her signed up for Icon in New York, where she was a model in New York for a while. She saw how hard that business was, and she decided she went out. So she decided to go... <laughs> She decided that she wanted to um, go to um, school for culinary arts. She's now working in Northwest as a chef in Northwest. So they go to show you if these kids have that exposure, if they have that exposure, that they can really take off. So I'm going to ask you, what are you going to do? What are you businesses, other businesses going to do to take this to another level? The mayor's done their part. Businesses have to step up. The city council has done their part by dealing with the legislation. What are you going to do to take this to another level? What are you going to do? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Saleem. Um, up next, I want to introduce uh, the, the lady of the hour, um, who in some ways needs no introduction. Um, but I do want to say that for us, it has been extremely uh, meaningful and important to us that we have a mayor who is committed to young people. Um, and one of the things that um, our mayor did almost immediately upon um, entry into office is that she signed legislation related to the SYEP, renaming it in honor of Marion Barry, um, who founded the program in 1979. <laughs> And since that time, our mayor has been intimately involved in making sure that this program is an extreme success um, and working to expand it to serve more young people, um, which is an extremely important venture um, for the young people here in the city. And so we are extremely appreciative of that commitment and of her commitment to wanting to hear from our young people. Um, the I Wish You Knew Town Hall um, was an amazing opportunity for young people to have their voice heard. I um, mean, it just means a lot for young people to know that their mayor really cares um, about what they have to say and what their experiences look like. Um, and that she's working to create pathways to the middle class for them. Um, so I want to give it up for our mayor, Muriel Bowser. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, please, please. It's a great day in Ward 8, isn't that right? So let me a- acknowledge first and foremost uh, my friend and the new Ward 8 council member. Stand up for the Ruby May. I, w- I recalled uh, last week when I saw the council deliberating. I was I was just there last year this time. Uh, and I looked fondly and I said to myself, thank God the Ward 8 council member is in the building because LaRuby um, stood up strong and is going to fight and is going to stand up always uh, for the people of Ward 8. And we couldn't be uh, more proud of the work um, that she and all the members of the council are going to be doing. And I'm going to have something to say about all of this. Uh, let me also acknowledge members of my staff who are here, the Deputy Mayor for Greater Economic Opportunity, Courtney Snowden, uh, the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, Brian Kenner, uh, as well as the Executive Director of our efforts here at St. Elizabeth, Catherine Buell. Give her a big round of applause. Uh, the city administrator is somewhere here with our budget team, Rashad Young. Uh, our chief of staff, John Felchicchio, is there in the back. And our wonderful staff uh, at DOES, uh, who has a big job. They stand up uh, about 15,000 employees over the summer. So, Jaron. And Deb Carroll, we want to acknowledge all of the, the work uh, that, that you're doing as well. Um, so you heard about the Summer Youth Program. Um, and in addition to being uh, joined uh, by our our uh, a lot of our staff and folks here, we have a lot of people um, who care about how we advance in Ward 8 um, in the building, including our ANC commissioners. We're the Ward 8 ANC commissioners. I see Commissioner Cuthbert. Good. Thank you. Everybody give a wave to the ANC commissioners of Ward 8. Um, and I am also just thrilled uh, about the spirit of unity in, in Ward 8 as well. As a, it was a big fight um, for the direction of, of Ward 8, and I couldn't um, be happier to see Natalie Williams here. Let me acknowledge Natalie. I saw Eugene Kinlow here. Let me say hi to him. Um, I see Chris Berry somewhere. Where's Chris Berry? And Sheila Bunn, give Sheila Bunn a big round of applause. Um, and we're looking forward to working hand in hand with you on the future of Ward 8 um, as well. So thank you um, today for being here. So today we are indeed celebrating an accomplishment um, by expanding economic opportunity for young people in our community. Um, I pledged over two years on the campaign trail that we would do exactly uh, that, that we would double down on our commitment uh, to young people to to make sure that they too had a pathway to the middle class. Indeed, one of our first acts was to rename um, the Summer Youth Program in honor of its founder and our friend, uh, the four-time mayor and also Ward 8 Council member, Marion S. Berry. And a good friend of mine and Mary is Trayon White, I understand, is here. Where is Trey? He left. Okay. He's not here. So uh, we decided as well, and not a, a new concept, but one that I talked about in two years on the trail, because I met young people wherever I, I went. Um, who, like Anwar said, for one reason or another were disconnected from school or disconnected from work. I met them at grocery stores. I met them on the street. I met them in different housing communities. Um, And one thing that was clear to me, while they were disconnected, they didn't want to be. They wanted a pathway back to productive life. And one thing that was clear to me is that this government had a role in helping them get back um, to a pathway to productive life. The other thing I learned about them was that they wanted to work. 
they want it to work. So I knew a government of uh, $12 billion every single year that makes investments could certainly invest in their 22 to 24-year-olds. So we didn't want to wait until next year because the budget that we're working on is going to affect next summer. Uh, so one thing that we did uh, with the city administrator, with all of our staff and uh, with the council, uh, we set aside in this fiscal year, FY15, $5 million so that we could expand the summer youth program this summer. So that's why I'm thrilled today to be signing into legislation. Uh, this uh, expansion of the summer youth program, but also to be talking about how all of us need to fight for the expansion of this summer youth program in future years. You see, uh, the council in expanding um, the program, as I asked, they also limited the expansion to this summer. Now, that's not right. That's not right. What I told them in, in orange, thank God, said, stood up and said, we have a commitment to these young people this summer. And the mayor has limited the program this summer to 1,000 people, but we know we have 1,500 people still waiting to get involved. And so that's why we want to permanently expand the program and make sure we're serving the needs of all of our residents. Now, you see, when I raised my hand on January the 2nd, I knew that I had a commitment to all eight wards in the District of Columbia. And no matter where we live in this city, we share that commitment, or at least we should. We know that out of those 2,500 people that signed up, the predominant number of those young people came from Ward 8 and Ward 7. We know that there was also a significant number in Ward 5 and in Ward 4. But no matter where you live or no matter what ward you represent, you have an obligation to support the young people in all eight wards of the District of Columbia. Don't you think? So I don't know about you. But I'm counting on some good-minded people to go down to the council. And the council has a big job, and I'm counting on them. And we saw out of all the committed reports that they have, they share our values in a lot of ways. They want to make sure that we're investing $100 million every year in affordable housing investments. And I want to thank... I want to thank Council Member Anita Bonds for making sure that that commitment is met out of her committee. The council also wants to make sure that we're putting a significant down payment on ending homelessness in the District of Columbia. And I want to I want to thank uh, Council Member Alexander for making sure that she protected that investment um, in her committee um, and making sure that we can make that investment as well. And I want to thank. I really want to acknowledge Council Member Vincent Orange for standing up for young people and the employment of young people, but also making sure that in every ward of the District of Columbia, not just a few, we have clean teams and that those clean teams are paid the living wage. Thank you, Council Member, for that. But I also want to call to your attention how important it is that we stay focused on the economic development of our city. Now, you know, I was the chairwoman of the Economic Development Committee. And you may know now, there is no Economic Development Committee. Uh, and it is important that we stay focused, not just in the downtowns, not just in the Southwest, but in Ward 8 and Ward 4 and Ward 5, that we continue to make those investments. So it saddens me to say that we're standing in an investment um, that we need to build on. And instead, what the council's budget recommendations thus far would do uh, is force us to close this center. That's what it would do. What it would do is force us 
to close the pavilion. What it would do is take money out of the capital improvements for St. Elizabeth's. And what I'm here to tell you is that's not right. Uh, and what I'm here to tell you is we all have to stand together no matter where we live and fight for the economic development that Ward 8 deserves. Are you with me? Let, let me just also say that we have other, other reasons to, to be concerned. Uh, we know, and one of the things that I have been uh, heard directly from residents of Ward 8 about is that they had to leave their communities to, to go to schools all over the city. And it was costing them $30 per child per month. And when we instituted Kids Ride Free on the Metro bus, it put real money in real people's pockets. What, what I also learned was that a lot of families couldn't take advantage of Kids Ride Free on Metro bus because it would take them two or three hours to get to school. They have to ride the rail in order to get to school. And I'm very proud that this budget contains $7 million to expand Kids Ride Free to Metro Rail. That's a good thing. And we need to fight for that, because i got to tell you, Councilmember Alexander, uh, your constituents have among the longest school commutes in the city. A lot of kids are leaving Ward 7 to go to Hardy, are leaving Ward 7 and Ward 8 to go to Duke Ellington, and I don't think they should have to ride for two hours on the bus. So will you stand up with me for Kids Ride Free? I'm also concerned uh, when I, I see capital improvement changes. I know how hard Council Member McDuffie and his staff have worked for the Industrial Land Task Force. And one of the big things, one of my favorite projects, is consolidating the DPW facilities so that land in Ward 5 that's being used for trucks, and we need land for trucks, but we could use that land better. So why then uh, would the council use that project as a piggy bank, taking 20 millions out of it so we can't realize the industrial land task force? That's not right. And we got to make sure we don't use that site as a piggy bank. The other thing is when we looked around and we looked at that capital budget, and Mr. Barry, God bless him, he was focused on Anacostia. He was. He was. But we didn't have enough money for the Anacostia Recreation Center. So the council shouldn't take $3.5 million out of one of the few Ward 8 capital improvement projects, should it? That's not right. And are you going to stand with me to make sure that doesn't happen? Now, Council Member Alexander, I know how long you fought to make sure that Parkside got connected to the Metro. We can't use that as a piggy bank either. The people in Parkside need to be connected to jobs, and they can be connected to jobs by a pedestrian connection to the Metro. Now, I'm going to fight for that. Will you fight for that with me? Now, Council Member Todd, you may be the, the furthest from home right now, <laughs> but I know you were with me when every retailer came into our booth in Las Vegas and said, when is, when is Walter Reed going to be open? Because we need to get to Walter Reed. Uh, how about that Walter Reed? Because uh, we, we got to open at Walter Reed. Now, does it make sense to take money out of Walter Reed when we're right about to sign the LDA? That's not right. <laughs> And we can't do that. So we have to fight for economic development in all eight wards of the District of Columbia. The final thing I'll say uh, about that uh, is this. Um, sometimes people disconnect public housing from economic development or when we talk about housing. And I'm committed to getting the new communities program right. Uh, my budget includes the investment uh, to preserve and transform 1,600 units 
of public housing in the District of Columbia. One of the toughest projects is, is Lincoln Heights in Ward 7. Um, and we are prepared, Deputy Mayor Kenner and, and our administration is pulling together an application for HUD uh, to help us get new communities, especially Lincoln Heights, a feasible plan that's supported by the federal government. Now, I don't think the council should remove that $500,000. Do you? So I say all this to say we have a $12 billion budget and we are going to agree on more things than we don't agree on. The council, like we did, has a very tough job to make sure we can make the critical investments that we need, balance the budget, and be fiscally responsible. I have a lot of friends on the city council, and I know that they want to do the right things for the District of Columbia as well. But I also know this. I've spent a lot of time talking to D.C. residents, and they told me, Bowser, stay focused on investments in all eight wards. Stay focused on building progress, but don't leave anybody behind. And more than anything, go down there and fight for us. That's why we elected you. And so that's what we're here to do today. That's what we're here to do today. And no matter what, uh, we are going to implement programs that help us uh, on a pathway to the middle class. Today, what we're here to talk about, I digressed a little bit because I have a few things on my mind. But what we're here to talk about is how 1,000 young people this summer will be on the pathway they will be jump-started into a positive work experience. And don't let anybody tell you that's a waste of time. Don't let anybody tell you that that's not worth the money. Don't let anybody tell you that these young people aren't worth it. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't take the view that they have to fend for themselves. We're a prosperous city. And we owe them a jump start into their lives. And we'll do it. So uh, let me start by introducing um, the MBSYEP champion of 2015, the at-large council member, Vincent Orange. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is indeed an honor to be standing here with, uh, with the Honorable Mayor Muriel Bowser. And let me tell you, you know, she's off to a great start, to an unbelievable start, and I don't see why anyone would want to slow her down. Because as she's indicated, this is, this is about all eight wards, about everybody moving forward together. And I can see nothing wrong with 2,519 22 to 24 year olds being employed under the Marion Berry Summer Youth Program. I can see nothing wrong with that. I can see nothing wrong with young people riding the bus free, riding the Metro Rail free to go to school to get a good education. I can see nothing wrong with that. I can see nothing wrong with us making the investment in the new communities, something that's been on the books for a very long time, 1,645 units, to, in order to come back and leave no one behind. Now, we built up downtown. We went from being a $2 billion government to almost a $13 billion government, told everybody to follow us, follow our plan, but the plan was the economic resurgence of Washington, D.C., citizens plan for prosperity. So now the prosperity must come back to those who've been left behind. Give them an opportunity to have, what is it, the pathway to the middle class. That's all we're talking about. And you're right, it's unfortunate at, at this last vote that there was a cap, a cap for only 1,000 people to get a job. Well, 2,519 people took it upon themselves to go down fill out an application to say to this city, I want to do the right thing. I want to be a part. I want to be a part of the green machine. I want to be a part of this machine that's moving. I want to be a part of this thing where this lady is talking about a fresh start in a new direction. I'm not leaving anyone behind. And yet, what does this council do? 
Look at that budget. Look at how some of these committees, what they're doing with this money. It's not being used effectively. It's not being used efficiently. And yet we as a people have got to come together and we've got to give our people a start. So I'm pleased to be here today standing strong with the mayor. I'm going to be down there fighting with the mayor. I'm glad to have new people on the council to help us with this fight. But at the end of the day, you need seven votes. We need nine votes. So it's going to take everybody in here to get down there and put pressure on the council. The, only the squeaky wheel gets the oil. If you don't squeak, you ain't getting no oil. If you don't make no noise, then we're going to be left behind. So let's get behind this mayor who's doing the right thing, who won fair and square, and she is the mayor, okay, <laughs> to the council. The council is not the mayor. She's the mayor. She ran on a plan, and it's a reasonable plan. It'd be something else if it was unreasonable or if it was just out of this world. It's a reasonable plan where everybody moves forward. And at the end of the day, together we stand, divided we fall. God bless the District of Columbia. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize my, we, we, I used to call her my sister council member because we were elected on the very same day, um, but she is doing a wonderful job leading the committee on health and now human services and representing Ward 7, Yvette Alexander. Good morning. I guess everyone is getting their budget tidbits in this morning. <laughs> Uh, but I'm glad to be here, and I know we have to get back for some important budget business. As the Ward 7 Council Member and representing East of the River, I'm excited to have Council Member May uh, join me because we do have a coalition, East River. And while I'm in Ward 8, I guess I have to make a couple of commitments, and I'll speak now because I will tell you, your Council Member in Ward 8 has hit the ground running. Uh, I remember my first budget. And when I look at Councilmember Todd and Councilmember May, I said, I don't even want to see my first budget again because they were really fighting and prepared for their first budget. So while I'm in Ward 8 and I want to make this commitment in front of your council member here for the $3.5 million for Anacostia, that will be restored to you. <laughs> I don't need to explain why I'm doing that, but just know. <laughs> It will be restored. And for this beautiful center, not only do I want to support um, sustaining this center, I would love one in Ward 7. So we're definitely going to keep this here, too. So we will fight for that. I wanted to speak, and I have to give another hand to Jaron Price. I mean, because I know, I know firsthand, Madam Mayor, and thank you so much for your support of our young people. But I look forward to our our summer employment program, because I love all the young people uh, that I can have in my Ward 7 office. I think I've learned a lot from them, and hopefully they've learned a lot from me. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to house the Department of Employment Services headquarters in Ward 7, and I see those lines wrapped around the building every February, no matter what the weather, um, to get enrolled into the Summer Youth Employment Program, the Marion Barry uh, now Summer Youth Employment Program. I often used to tease him. I think I'm the only person in the district that didn't have a mayor summer youth job. Uh, I was private industry, a people's <laughs> drugstore. <laughs> I was out there applying for retail jobs. Uh, but the, it means so much to our young people to have these jobs. And I'm really excited about the expansion because even the experience of the young people that I've had work in my office, um, they come from a diverse background. I've had young people who are foster children. I've had young people who come from single parent households, who vary, who come from various income levels, who may be in college, who may not have finished college, who may have, you know, not made it through, who may have some challenges in high school. So, I mean, uh, and who come from a wonderful family. I mean, I had one of my young people who drove a Mercedes to work. I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, you have a diverse group of young people, and I think that's good for all of our young people to see that diversity too. And it really means a lot for us 
to mentor our young people and to have this expansion. As the chair of Health and Human Services, I know about those young people who age out of foster care. I know about those young people who turn 18 or 21 and don't have the supports of an adult in their lives to guide their way. So all the employers in here, I applaud you, because sometimes we act in more than just employers. We act as mentors. We act as teachers. We act as counselors, as parents, extended parents. So it means a lot to our young people. We have to invest in our young people, and that means our time, our talent, and our treasure when we invest in our young people. So... Mayor Bowser, I commend you for this budget. She's a fighter, and she holds true, and I've witnessed this. She's holding true to her word. When she says she's going to do something, she does it. So I'm confident in you. I want to work with you for this budget. I definitely look forward to my young people coming into my Ward 7 office to work with me. I'm so proud of you, young man. Um, and all that you do to represent Ward 7. And we're definitely going to have this program this summer, and I look forward to this being a mainstay in the District of Columbia for years to come. So we'll work it out. <laughs> well, thank you, um, Council Member, and we appreciate it. We want to hear also from the newest of the new kids on the block, uh, and uh, my successor and, and dear friend and also someone who is very focused on how we move economic development projects, not just at Walter Reed, um, but on Kennedy Street um, and Ward 4's um, Great Street as well. So Brandon Todd from Ward 4. Well, good morning, and thank you, Mayor Bowser, and thank you to my colleagues and to the Department of Employment Services and everyone assembled today. I am delighted to be here in full support of the MB. S-Y-E-P, that's a tongue twister, uh, 2015 and beyond. I think it's very important that we show the young people in the District of Columbia that we're committed to investing in them. And I, myself, as the Ward 4 Council Member, am very pleased that nearly 1,800 young people in my ward will participate in this year's program. And I certainly, yes, that deserves a round of applause. And I certainly look forward to having one or maybe two or three of them in my Ward 4 Council office and really helping to give them the skills and, and the tools that they'll need to go out um, and good, get great jobs. And I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues on the council to make sure that Walter Reed stays on track, that McMillan, and that all of the economic development priorities that we have in Ward 4 and across the District of Columbia are realized because there are a lot of people counting on us. So thank you, Mayor, for your commitment and thank you to my colleagues. And um, I want to uh, introduce our host council member who will be followed by, I'm going to give Catherine a heads up that I'm going to ask you to come up after Ms. May and uh, just say a word about the RISE Center. So the Ward 8 council member, LaRuby May. Good morning, and uh, good morning, and welcome to Ward 8. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so let me uh, begin first by uh, giving thanks to the creator who gave me the opportunity to serve the great resident of Ward 8. Uh, thank you. To, uh, to the, the late and former mayor, council member, board member, Mr. Marion Barry for his insight and his wisdom to actually start and to really make sure that the summer youth employment program, uh, was something that was sustainable. Um, also to Mayor, Mayor Bowser for her vision to expand the SYEP program for young adults 22 to 24 years old. Um, I also thank all the colleagues on the council for passing the measure and for funding the measure. Yes. for FY 2015. Uh, so we all know and are aware of the unemployment issues in the city and very specifically for the residents of Ward 8. So I look forward to this expansion, setting a foundation that will provide permanent employment and a pathway to the middle class for all of our young adult participants. This pathway leads to long-term employment, it leads to home ownership, and it leads to self-sustainability for Ward 8 residents. I know that employment and financial resources are the immediate gains that the participants will have of this program. 
But I'm also aware that research shows that summer employment programs serve as a very strong tool for violence prevention. Um, th there's a study of the summer jobs program in Chicago, Mayor, that, that found that the arrests in violent crimes were 43% fewer among those individuals who participated in summer job programs. <laughs> the connection between employment and crime are very real. And although it is not the only tool we will use in Ward 8 to reduce crime, I am confident that this program and this expansion will yield positive results. I encourage my colleagues on the council to support this program and to put it as a high priority for the FY uh, 17, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20s budget. <laughs> the, the, the cost of prevention is cheaper than intervention. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the many community leaders who have joined us today in an effort to strongly encourage Chairman Phil Mendelson to restore the mayor's budget priority of funding the RISE Demonstration Center in the Gateway Pavilion. Yeah, okay. that, that works. Some of them have been mentioned before, but I want to acknowledge them for being here. Uh, uh, Commissioner Natalie Williams, Dr. Keeter Vanderpool, Mr. White has left, but we appreciate his support of this initiative. Commissioner Anthony Lorenzo Green, Mr. Christopher Barry, Commissioner Troy Presswood, Chairman Mary Cuthbert, Commissioner Paul Trantham, Sheila Bunn, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Talbert over at Faith Tabernacle, who is represented by Minister Jackson, Commissioner Muhammad, Mr. Eugene Kinlo, Ms. Robin Committee, all Ward 8 leaders who are coming to stand with us. Right. So these facilities provide a much needed resources for our community. Ward 8 residents have continually been underserved and under resourced by this government. The Ward 8 seat is now filled. <laughs> and we will not be left out without a fight. Again, thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you to the members of the council who made sure that this expansion program became a reality. I look forward to the continued support of the programs that have significant impact on the lives of Ward 8 residents. Thank you. So I, I wanted to invite Catherine to come up and just say uh, a minute or so uh, about where we are at the RISE Center. And um, if Christopher Barry is still here, I'd like him to join me at the table for the bill signing. Catherine. Well, thank you, Mayor Bowser, very much um, for acknowledging the work that we do here at the RISE Center. Mayor Bowser has been an ongoing supporter of ours and has seen us grow from when we just opened the pavilion and opened our Whole Foods market to opening the RISE Demonstration Center. We have had over 60,000 visitors come through the St. Elizabeth's campus since we've opened Gateway, D.C. And I have to tell you, that is an accomplishment because when we first opened Gateway DC, people thought it was a joke that they had to come to St. Elizabeth's to come to an event. And this has really become a community center, a place where everybody is embraced. And we would not be here without all the community members who fought very hard. Even in the name RISE, it stands for Relate, Innovate, Stimulate, and Elevate. And Ward 8 is represented amongst all of those words. And we thank you all for all of your support. And we hope that not only funding will be here, but we can continue the amazing partnerships and the programs with the help of everybody in this room, um, the support of Mayor Bowser, the support of Deputy Mayor Kenner, who we could not do the work that we do without them. So thank you very much, and we hope that you will enjoy your time here at RISE. Thank you. So may I ask the ANC commissioners, Harry Wingo from the Chamber of Commerce, our SYEP participants to join me behind the table, and I need one more chair. Um, Christopher and I will um, take our seats.
IEP. That's why we're here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.